Did you enjoy the Swedish fika? The Bensträckare, or, or what it was? Um, okay. Uh, now we have had some fun, but enough of fun. Let's go over to some serious issues. Let's talk about, well, we would like to go through the, the, the quiz, but now discuss the questions a bit, a bit deeper than we did uh, during the quiz. <coughs> So are you, are yeah. you ready, Stefan? Yeah, I was born ready. <laughs> uh, okay, so you were actually good. Give yourself another applause. Because <laughs> if, uh, if you would ask a normal s citizen of the world and not the extra bright people that you are, uh, you would get a much more negative answer than, than you would give on the, these, these questions. So, um, be proud. You know more than other do, people do. But, so, this, the majority were right here. Uh, when it comes to life expectancy, uh, 4 out of 10 lived in extreme poverty in 1990. You were right about it has decreased. And when it comes to malaria, the deaths has decreased by 200,000. And most people thought that there were at least a, de uh, a decrease. Okay, so people tend to give, the, the give negative answers. And why is it so, Stefan? Um, it's a good question. I mean, uh, we know that most people are not as good as you are. We have tested this over and over again for over the last 10, 15 years. Uh, the foundation Gapminder, which was formed by Hans Rosling, a Swedish professor makes these tests regularly in different countries. And many of these questions, well, some of the questions that you were asked has also been asked to a broader population. And, and the results are stunningly negative when it comes to our worldview. We tend to think that the world is so much worse than it actually is. Um, and now in this, I mean, setting, when you were kind of expecting a quiz and you, were, you knew that it was a quiz and you thought that maybe I should answer what, what seems most likely that the people up here would answer or ask you, uh, but, but the general um, knowledge level or level of knowledge in society about global development is much more negative than what the statistics shows. So when we say this, and our main, um, our main message here today is that we need to be fact-based. We need to know what the world looks like and how the world is developing and, and not miss the good stories. We're not, the reason why we say that is it's not to like overemphasize good things and neglect ne bad things. We're getting back to that. But, but it's important to also see progress. Because when we ask people, like this question, I'm only going to show you the last one. This says, has poverty increased? When asked in countries like Sweden, United Kingdom, United States, um, when we are asking people, has uh, poverty rate gone up or down? Most people say that the poverty in the world has actually increased, in spite of the fact that it was one of the, the first millennium development goals, in spite of the fact that this was one of the biggest goals for the world's development over the last 25 years. This has not reached the broader population. Uh, and one reason is, I think, that the most pictures that we get, now these are old pictures, but from what we in Sweden see as developing countries, the term developing and developed countries are still being used in the UN and the World Bank and by everyone, and it's such a bad, bad, bad term, and it's not only a bad term, it's a bad division of the world in developed and developing countries. Uh, but if this is the picture we always get from the news media, how are we supposed to get the news? How are we supposed to know progress in different parts of the world? So our main message here when it comes to the news media is that, that every single day when you read the paper or watch uh, news on the TV or most no news that you get shared from your friends via Facebook or social media, Twitter, uh, linked to other articles are uh, examples of bad uh, news. And it's logical. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's not weird that we have news stories about uh, conflict and wars. That's, that's, of course, we should talk about that. But if we only get to hear when there's a war, but never when there is peace, then we, we get a skewed world, uh, world view. And that's, that's my point there. And again, we didn't want to, we, 
no one would like to read about, oh, s still no war in Zambia, or okay, no war has broken out in this part of India today. I mean, th that is non-news, right? Uh, so, and the normal development of the world is slowly getting better. Most people tend to make decisions so that the situation will get better and better slowly. And most countries have done that. And we've seen that over and over again. Okay, and so, and let's look at question yeah. four and five. Four and five, is or, that? Or never mind the sweet, okay, heart attack is. Oh, never mind that one. Uh, Here we go. This is a very telling one, I think. Yeah, and they, they thought it was war, violence, and terrorism. Yeah. At least the majority did. And, and the thing is that our point of, of showing this is that, of course, war and violence and terrorism is a bad thing. But we, since that is the main core of the news message that we get from different parts of the world. That's the only news we get from some countries in the world. Then we don't get other progress and other problems. Um, and the fact is that child mortality rate in, for, well, there was another question, right? You want to show also? Yeah, because if you go back to the, to the picture that we... This one? No, no, yes, show me the... The, the next one? No, I want the, 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 the pictures you had on the children. Oh, yeah, okay. the why didn't you say that? Yeah, that one, yeah. <laughs> we love working to that together. Uh, if you look at these pictures and, and you say, well, look at the world is getting better and look at the trends, mm. that's one thing. Mm. But, it, you know, at the same time, you have the people there. Yeah. You know, you can't, if, if you look at uh, infant mortality, um, child mortality, you can say that the trends are so good, yeah. extremely good actually, but if you look at the actual numbers, yeah. there are 16,000 kids every day dying. Yeah. And Isn't that, also that important for media to highlight? Yeah, it is, and it's really, really important that we focus on the problems. My, I think that we focus too little on the actual pro problems of the world, but we also focus too little on the progress uh, in the world, because yeah, it's true, uh, these are real pictures, although some of them are quite old, but yes, we still have uh, starvation in the world. We still have people dying from, from too little nutrition or too little water or just a, a clean toilet or, or functioning uh, sanitary functions. So, and, and, and we, are, we still have extremely high numbers of poor people in the world today. It's 700 million people approximately, it could be 500, it could be a billion, we don't really know, but somewhere around there. S but, so we have to be able to focus on both the trend line that is getting better, but not doing that by neglecting actual program. Because when we say that poverty is going down, we don't mean that it's easier to be poor. Poverty today is as poor as poverty was 50 or 100 years ago. We're just saying that fewer people living in those situations, fewer people have to bury their children today than before. Fewer women die in, in, um, in, in maternal disorder when they become pregnant or, or having a baby. Fewer women are being wounded for life during a, a birth today than before. But it's still very common and it's still a huge problem. And for that individual that it happens to, the situation is as bad. So yes, this is real pictures. We have to be show them. And media do the right thing when they, when they show poverty in the world. Uh, but we have to, as, as news consumers, when you read Dagens Nyheter or whatever paper you read, or when you get the news, you must uh, remember that every single day the world, the total world, and the average in the world, and most countries in the world, are better than the picture that the paper are selling you. Every single day, the picture you get is more negative than average in the world. Because if we don't get that, if we don't see that the trend is actually going in that right direction, I mean, who would have the energy to fight the situation? And if, we, if, we, if it was true that this is the situation and it get, never get better, who would think that we could change the world? But because we have made huge progress, as we will show you uh, on the next slide. Uh, and that question in Afghanistan, this is just, uh, we made a graph a few, a few years ago, or one year ago, uh, oh, that's right, uh, to show you every person here is 10 persons, so that means that the war in Afghanistan during the whole 15 years killed 20 people a day, and in Iraq it killed 50 people a day, in Syria now the last couple of years killed even more people. Uh, 
but if you look at how many people die from poverty, uh, this is just children dying per day in India in 2015. And every person is 10 kids. Uh, so the, the extent of poverty and extent of the problem is still huge, even though it's smaller than 10 years ago. And we have to be very glad about the trends and see and positive about where the world is moving because during this period we have saved millions, hundreds of millions of lives because of the progress. Uh, at this, we, we have to be as glad for the progress as we are angry for the, the un, unfair situation that still exists today. And we need to focus on both parts. Uh, so, but I think that's important, uh, the question we had there in Afghanistan, because every single day in Afghanistan, and that's one of the countries with the most terror attacks and most combat death as we've seen in the world, not one single day has more people been killed uh, by terrorism or war in Afghanistan than from poverty-related diseases. Poverty is the main killer in the world, uh, especially when it comes to, to kids. Uh, and we think that's important to highlight and remember uh, because if we focus on the wrong things and if we only, fo and that comes with the question about the military spending as well, that we spend 13 as much money on military, uh, military, on military, <laughs> <laughs> military, 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 <laughs> then we spend on, uh, on total global aid. And that aid is supposed to go to building up uh, states, building up institutions, help uh, mothers uh, in everything, education, healthcare, water. Uh, so it's, we have, I mean, that might become one of the, the consequences when we tend to focus on the wrong things. Well, not wrong things, but, but not focusing on the right things at least. Okay, and then uh, give, give me the question eight. Question eight. I don't know which that one was, but. That was the one um, about violence in Sweden. Is this this one? No. There we go. Why did we ask this question? Uh, Why is this relevant? It is re relevant because now you, uh, I don't know if you are really, really uh, well read about statistics, but when you ask this question in Sweden and Brottsförebyggande Rådet, our authority, d d does that every single year. And now 70 or 80% of the Swedish population think that crime rate is going up, violence is going up, rape is going up, murder is going up, and, vi and, and uh, robbery is going up, for example, or threats are going up. But the fact is that it doesn't. And over the last 25 years, fewer and fewer people get killed, fewer and fewer people get robbed, fewer and fewer people get beaten. Uh, and we know this pretty well, but still the discussion in Sweden is how could we stop the exploding violence and the exploding rape epidemic? And, and the thing is, we do, we do have this deliberate disinformation. Uh, sometimes we don't know it because we really think that crime rate is going up. And how could you not think that when you read every single week about a rape or a murder or, 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 or some, some increased crime in, in some parts of, uh, of a city? But the fact is that Sweden has become safer in the, aspect that, in the aspect that fewer and fewer people get killed. And that goes for other areas as well. If you look at the global, uh, this is, yeah, when, when I say this, most people think Donald Trump, uh, because this is what he does in his campaign. But he's not the only one. I think every politician in some aspects do this. I mean, take the statistics you want or the fact you want and present that as uh, reality. And, and not only politicians, but I mean, uh, organizations trying to help the world also show uh, like the, the sliver of the world that they need to focus on. So it's, it's, it's nothing weird, but we do have this deliberate, and, and uh, they checked Donald Trump's speeches, like the last 10 speeches, and they found a lie every sixth minute a big lie when he like tried to tell you the world wasn't what. But I, I, I would expect that you would find also that in Hillary. And in Sweden we have this woman, He's, she's called Elisabeth Höglund. Uh, <laughs> no, she is not at all like Trump, but she's a former, for the people who don't know, she's a former uh, journalist in Sweden and um, a very respected journalist. Uh, and then she won the, the biggest Swedish uh, TV show, Po Sporet, on the track. Uh, and so, so she should be the brightest person in the, but uh, she, 
is one example of when you try to explain the world. This is an article about our foreign aid, and, and her idea is that it's really, really bad with aid. And we could discuss aid, because there are different forms of aid. Some are good and some are bad. But what she's saying here is that in spite of all the billiarder, uh, which is not a really word in Swedish, billiard, for you who don't know that, billiard is a game, it's pool when you <laughs> But, but, but she uses that like a counting word. So anyway, uh, so she says we, we are pumping in money in Africa and nothing ever happens. That's the picture. And it's a very common picture. And that's one of the reasons why we think that the world is, is much worse than that place. Because everyone has been talking about this. Said, the aid industry has said, oh, look how poor Africa, we need more aid. And the, the people don't like foreign aid say, oh, look at Africa, it's so poor. It shows that aid doesn't work. And, and the readers... When they read this, the, the, the knowledge they are left with is that countries like Mozambique, Namibia, Tanzania, uh, Burkina Faso, that's the four countries she takes, uh, are really, really bad development. But if you look at the statistics of those countries, they have shown huge progress in many areas, not all areas, and not maybe fast enough, and they're still poorer than many other parts of the world. But this is the top list of where child mortality decreased the most during the last 15 years. Tanzania is there. Uh, cut child mortality rate with 63%, and Rwanda cut child mortality rate with 77% in 15 years. That's so much fat. They did in 15 years what Sweden made in 60, 50 or 60 years when they made the same travel. And life expectancy is going up. And these are very poor countries, but have shown... So you have to differentiate between how poor it is and where it's going. Because if you, if you take, oh, Tanzania is still poor, well, then everything in Tanzania does. Every person working to fight poverty in Tanzania, every person try to, to change things that we just heard here up on the stage. If we didn't see any progress, then that means that their work would be useless, or people trying to, to change the world to something better has been useless. But it hasn't. Uh, we still could say that it's not maybe good enough or fast enough or, or equal enough, and there are still many obstacles in the world. But, but we have to see progress. That's my point. And, and then Sweden. Yeah, <laughs> that was the question. Sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, Sweden. When we ask this in Sweden, we get all these uh, reports. It's because... I've been talking about this for 15 years and say, oh, the statistics shows a little bit better world than you think. And people go like, yes, good, Tanzania, good for you. Uh, and then I say, the same for Sweden. Crime rate is going down. Did you know that? And we don't, probably haven't seen an increase in sexual violence in Sweden. And people get mad and say, no, you're lying. I've been threatened. Uh, they, uh, they've been wanting to send my, my family to Saudi Arabia to meet Muslims because they, this bad development uh, they are describing is due to immigration almost all the time. And it's simply not true. The statistic doesn't support that. Uh, so I was just shocked. I just took this because I was just shocked that, that, that it was harder for Sweden to see Sweden's own development than it was for us to buy uh, that the world is actually going in the right direction. This is just murder rate in different countries. Crime rate is going down in most countries like Sweden. Uh, and we know this. So uh, my point is like this. There's something we can measure. We know. We know that the world is not flat. It's not an opinion. You can't think, I think the world is flat. That is not an opinion because we can measure it and we can see now it's kind of round. Uh, and the same here. We, there are stuff we know and I think we should start with, with the knowledge that we do have. We have to move on now, I think, because I can stand up talking about this forever. But, <laughs> but, but, uh, but, but yeah, the world is moving in the right direction and it's time that we actually see that. Yeah, and let's talk about the right direction because I think if you look at uh, question 9 and 10 yes especially yeah Norway the winner ah. but it wasn't actually it, it was, was Singapore. Singapore and then and then we had this question and people were wrong it was it was 50 percent and you were applauding because that, and that's because it's a good thing uh, but and I think I don't think we actually understand the extent of, of the progress. And I no, I think you're right. About, about that. I, I, I don't think we understand the extent of the progress, how much better the world is today than before. But also sometimes we don't understand the extent of the problem, the fact that 16,000 kids die every day. Yeah, we don't, yeah. but, but I think it's, important to, it's equally important to know both. But I think we do lack this knowledge. And, and one graph I'm going to show you now about how the world is developing. This is a really good graph, and it's... it's it's from gapminder.org. It doesn't look like that, but it is. Um, 
So, so this is a graph made by, by uh, Gapminder. This axis shows number of children per woman. So if, if you are a country here, uh, that means that, that you get many children per family per woman. And on this axis, we have life expectancy, uh, the average years that the people will survive in a country. So this is in 1950. And then we had develop, be, de, <laughs> developed countries and developing countries. The world was divided in those two groups. Either you were a rich country and you had few children and long life, or you were a poor country with had uh, many children and short lives. And I'm just going to click play and we can see what has happened in the world since then. This is 60 years of global history, uh, global development in one minute. Uh, it goes fast, so pay attention. Look here, how life expectancy is going up. Oh, sorry, I missed to explain one thing. The bubbles are countries. <laughs> it's kind of important to know. Uh, so this is China, this is India, Sweden is up here. Uh, Blue is Africa, green is uh, Latin America or America, and red is Asia. <laughs> Sorry about that. Now we go. Uh, it's kind of important to know. So you can see that China's going up, and then China had catastrophe years in the late 50s. But they bounced back, and in the 70s, they reduced number of children per woman. Look, India is going along there. Bangladesh, far, far after. Look at the green countries now. No, they're red, these ones. This is North Africa, Middle East. Uh, they had development, but they forbid condoms. Up until now, now it's okay to use condom. Look at Iran there in the middle, just passing everyone very, very fast. Three, six, seven, five, four, three, two. And now, 15 years ago, uh, for 15 years, Iran has two children per woman. Most countries are moving very rapidly towards two children per woman uh, in a pace that we've never seen before. And look at this change in human life. To go from that situation and having uh, six, seven children per woman on average in a country. And by then, most common was also that child mortality rate was 20, 30, maybe 40%. So we have gone from a situation where you get, instead of having to give birth to seven children and bury two, most countries of the world now get two children and both of them will survive. And that's a huge development. And what's behind that is a broad sense of development. The Millennium Development Goals that we talked about earlier that, that ended 2015 and was replaced by the new goals. This is the development. This is how far, uh, how long we went towards that goal. Uh, so this is poverty rate. Uh, sorry, it's in Swedish, but I didn't have time to translate. Uh, poverty rate is what we, we reach that goal. We reach the gender equality in primary school um, in enrollment rate. We, we reach, we, we turn the trend on HIV, tuberculosis, malaria. I'm not saying this is not still issues in the world, but we reach the goal that we set up to reach in 25 years. So, and look, all the uh, arrows are pointing upwards. That means that we have seen development for all these areas, as well as we've seen problems. But, but there are fewer people experienced from these problems uh, today than 10 years ago and 25 years ago. The, the, the fact that they're pointing upwards shows that the world today, 2015, is better, I do like this because we can decide what's, uh, we can discuss what's good and bad, but it's better in these areas than ever before in humankind. That gives us the opportunities to fight the problems that we have in the world, to fight poverty, fight inequality, fight health-related problems and issues, and poverty-related problems and issues, because we have better opportunity today than we had before. So we've seen this uh, area after area. It's going in the right direction for most, um, most indicators that we can measure. And I think it's important to start the discussion there to know what is possible to do in the future. Let's talk a bit about socio-economic change. Yeah. Because we have seen this, yep. and this is fantastic in so many ways, at least if you look at it, tra it trend-wise. Yes. Um, and we've seen it in uh, natural disasters, war-related deaths, diseases like malaria, HIV, AIDS, and also poverty-related poverty causes, except that those I just mentioned. So the, the morality, uh, rate also has gone down so much. And why is this? I think one of the reasons, well, the, I think the reason is that development is normal. I mean, a country that has their own opportunities of developing will do that. And, and uh, so when they get independence, that's important. During colonization, no country really developed. And after independence, that's where some uh, countries started moving fast and other ones took some time after in, like struggle, independence, fight, and so on. But independence is important. But the thing is that, that 
that the reason why we get these good statistics is because the world has gone through this enormous socioeconomic change, that we went from uh, a lot of poverty to a little less poverty. And more, more and more people are moving from poor countries, not moving from poor countries, but m moving from poverty to, to middle income level or high income uh, level. So we have seen that trend and it's important to have that because the, the richer, not richer in money, but the more developed, more resources and more, more opportunities a country has, the better it's suited to face any type of crisis. Uh, this is how poverty rate has gone down over the last uh, 200 years. Look at red is poor, green is non-poor when it comes to extreme uh, income poverty. There 90% of the population were poor, now we're down under 10% and most people are not poor. We can see that child mortality rate has gone down, fewer people are being killed by conflicts and war. That's what I talked about earlier. The last 15 years have been the most peaceful in 700 years. Fewer people are killed by HIV AIDS uh, and so on. So we've seen this lift that countries go, goes from poverty, this is now income on that, from poor, a poor state to a richer state. And that makes us better equipped to fight, I don't know, Ebola, uh, HIV AIDS, uh, natural disasters, wars, uh, crime rates and so on. Um, because of everything changes when you go from poverty to, to income poverty. Uh, education is going up. We talked about earlier how important education is. Education is going up. We get more and more well-educated people and the broader primary education is also going up. Healthcare is getting better, uh, infrastructure getting better, uh, everything uh, changes and, and for good and bad. So we have seen this huge economic progress and that's the fastest change that we have seen uh, over the, the last, I would say, 30, 40 years. So this huge development, like 200 years ago, every country was down in the poor uh, corner with a life expectancy below 40 years. 200 years ago, no country had a life expectancy over 40 years. And now every country has that, and that changes everything. Okay, and finally, let's look at the last question. Yeah, um, good. <laughs> well, are you tired? No, not at all. I could talk forever and ever. <laughs> and ever. Because that's the stuff that I know. Yeah, I know. Um, okay. Um, we ask this question as a way to talk about the future because, um, well, let's pose it, let's ask, let's pose it this way. Um, um, a lot of people are afraid what will happen when the earth contains f 10 billion people. Yeah. Uh, uh, and what happens if all those people needs a refrigerator is yeah. a common question. Uh, it is a common question. And, and the answer is that we will see because they will get a refrigerator for sure. And you can't stop it and it wouldn't be a good thing to stop it. But first of all, it's important to show that yes, population will grow, but it stops growing in a way. Not the number of people, but the, the, the number of children on this planet stop. Because as you saw, most countries are down to two children per woman. That means that we will not be more people than, more children than we are right now, two billion people. So that means that the population growth will stop somewhere around 11 billion, probably a little bit less. But the big change, uh, and I see you stand up now. I'm slowly approaching. Yeah, I see that, and I uh, know why. Ignore her, you ignore also her. you want to be a part of this good presentation. No, uh, and the thing that, that, that you saw that on my, my earlier graphs, every, uh, arrow was pointing upwards, I said, well, except for one, and that was the seventh goal, environmental sustainable development. That was the only air goal that actually went backwards. Uh, as you said, the uh, carbon dioxide emissions are twice as high, no, 50% higher than 1990. The train is going in the wrong direction, although we know that we should be going that far, they yeah, still increase. And the reason is not really more people, but richer people, because this is human development index, a measurement of income, health, and education. It's a good thing to be there. It's better for everyone if a country has 1.0 instead of 0 0.4. I could not emphasize this as much because that, that socioeconomic change that makes you move upwards is the precondition that children will survive, women will survive, that you have, could afford education and healthcare and, and, and sanitation and so on. So it's a good thing. But so far, the countries that did that travel earlier, we had 150 years advantage in Sweden and other rich countries. Uh, when, this is on environmental 
uh, impact it is an ecological footprint. It's not a perfect measurement, but it is a measurement. Uh, so that means that when countries become richer, more developed, they have taken more of the earth uh, to their expenses or whatever. Uh, so that means that, and, and now my, my pr prognosis for the future is that these countries will move, continue to move very fast to the, to the right. It's a good thing. We can't stop India. We could try and they say, well, good luck. And they would just pass uh, us. Or China, we could say no more economic development China. And they would say, we own your factories already. Give us a break. Uh, so, so movement there, we know. So we, if we know it, we will be 10, 11 billion people. 11 billion rich people in 50, 60, 70 years. Let's plan for that world today. And then we cannot be here. We have to be there. We have to go down in any measurement of ecological sustainability. Uh, not only to make room, but to save the planet. And the, the willingness to go right is very strong. That's why this, this trend is super strong. But the willingness for these countries to go down has so far been very, very slim. And that can only change when people in these countries say, we cannot be here. It will not happen automatically, but we have to go down. And that's up to you guys, I think. And that uh, was the last words. That's up to you guys. Mm. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Stefan and Mikkel. Good work.